Diablo 3 is what may be considered the long-awaited sequel to Diablo 2. Diablo 3 was released May 15, 2012, nearly 12 years after Diablo 2. I've mentioned before the kind of longevity that Diablo games have, but after 12 years, even die-hard Diablo 2 fans were wanting to see what would come next. To give you an idea, let me describe to you the process of me installing this game on my laptop. First things first, I bought the game not long after it came out for my dad's birthday. I installed it for him on his computer. I've played it on there with the Blizzard.net account I had to make. Since then, I've had to change my password at least once because I had over a month of inactivity on my Blizzard.net account. I don't get it. Why? Why did I have to make a new password because of that? Is it a punishment for not playing often enough? Because guess what, Blizzard? There was a reason I didn't play for a month. There was a reason, Blizzard. So, moving on to today, the first thing I had to do once I put the disc in was install Blizzard.com. Fucking, alright, fine, whatever, it didn't really take that long, and it's like, that's just how games work nowadays. Nobody really gives that much of a shit anymore. Is that sad? That we don't care that we have to log into five different accounts just to play a game? Luckily, I had the email and password to log in written down because A, I was sharing the game with my family, and they need to log in every time they play, and B... The damn passwords they need require like 50 fucking special characters and punctuation and need to be between negative 13 and 47.3 characters long. And even then the little password strength meter was just like, eh. So I log in and it takes me to Blizzard's program that lets me play five games exclusively. It starts installing, or so I thought. But it wasn't moving. It wasn't... Come on! There was a pop-up suggesting that I needed to put a code in? Like a, a disk code? I didn't grab the case, and I don't even know if D3 had a code to put in. I wouldn't be surprised if it did, on top of having to install a million other programs and always being online and asking me fucking riddles. So I click it. It opens up an Internet Explorer, and it just has this dark screen telling me, You need to update your secret question. Tell me your secrets. Then maybe I'll let you play. I do. It makes me log into Blizzard.org again, and then it starts installing. I don't... I, I don't know if it was necessary. I just, I can't even tell. I don't know. I just want to play my game. An hour later, I was able to. The game hadn't finished installing, but it said I could play. That's neat, I guess, but I'm wondering what's in that last part that isn't required. Maybe, maybe all my secrets. Wait, it just seems to contain all my other characters. There was only one available initially, and it's not even one that I remember making. Speaking of characters, this may be a good time to start talking about the actual game. Funny how the fucking game got put off for so fucking long, huh? Huh? Almost as if there was all this other bullshit I had to get through first. Almost like there was just this huge mountain of bullshit that I had to climb to get to the game. Imagine that. The first thing everybody complained about with Diablo 3 was the art style. It's soft and glowy and 3D, and not a whole lot like the gritty 2D textures from previous games. I would say that it doesn't matter so much, I said in the D2 video that I don't look much at the actual game when I'm playing Diablo anyway. I'm just keeping my eye on a couple certain spots. However, in D3, it seems like everything your character does causes an EXPLOSION! And it's hard to just... disregard that. There's definitely a lot more going on on the screen at any given time than there is in Diablo 2. With aforementioned EXPLOSIONS, and a huge variety of animations provided by using 3D models instead of sprites, as well as all the physical objects that you can now fuck around with, there's gonna be something moving and catching your attention. Between this and the soft, blue environments, the game is visually very different from the other games, which makes you feel alone in a world full of scraped knees and tetanus. Diablo 1 had its limited class abilities as well as randomly dropped spells for character progression. Diablo 2 had skill trees that kind of locked you into a character concept that may or may not suck infernal ass. And in Diablo 3 you have your class skills, which you can apply modifiers to that are unlocked as you level up. This prevents getting stuck with a shitty build as in Diablo 2, as you can change them on the fly. But at least on the class I played the most, the Monk, a lot of the skills and modifiers seemed pretty useless. On top of that, some of them would give bonuses to things like crit chance and crit damage. So if you wanted to get the most out of those skills, you'd want to find items that also give bonuses to those effects. Meaning your character was still going to be going towards one specific direction, though there may be arguments for and against this. More on that later. Speaking of items... FUCKING ITEMS! HOLY SHIT! I'm really torn on the items in Diablo 3. On the one hand, there's more slots for items and armor than ever before. Uh, uh, and there's a huge variety of types and qualities, as well as crafting and enchanting. Stolen from Torchlight? Hmm? There's generally one item slot that has a unique item type for each class. Monks have their focuses, barbs have their belts, stuff like that. But non-class specific items still have their use, and that's because of the properties that magical items have. Each class gets a particular stat that dictates their damage output. So you're going to want items that give you boosts to that stat, as well as health and whatever else. 
So what ends up happening is you pick the items that give you the biggest stat boost and your strength or your dex is going to be ridiculously high. And then you're going to have a million other modifiers with tiny, tiny percentages. You also want the socketed items so you can put gems in that give you the same stat boost. Gems in this game, eh, there's a smaller variety and there's no rune words, but there's still a lot more tiers to combine them to to get higher stat boosts. Everything in the game pretty much is going to be about giving you that stat boost. So before, I said that you could kind of build towards something if you wanted to use a particular modifier like crit chance. But you can easily change that up if you happen to find an item that gives you high bleeding damage and then pick a modifier to a skill that utilizes bleeding damage. However, there is the item shop. Find a great item but you can't use it on any of your characters? Put it up for auction and Diablo 3 will utilize its always online nature to let anybody see your item, search for it, what have you, and bid on it or buy it outright. And guess what? You can find some fucking ridiculous ass shit in the fucking auction house. You can easily find something that's way fucking OP for your character level. How do people find this shit? Does stronger shit get dropped when you play multiplayer? I know in Diablo 2 and probably 1, monsters definitely get stronger when there's multiple people. I, I don't know. It's cool though, I guess, and since your character's stashes are all linked, including gold, which automatically gets put into the overall stash bank party fund, if you play a while with any number of characters, you might be able to just buy shit for your build but there's not really any dynamicism there and you're not gonna fuck it up i guess so eh. unless you spend all your money and then you change your mind and i mean your money not your character's money because you can buy shit with real goddamn dollars who who would do that does anybody actually spend money on that well actually I, I bet they do since people spend money on phone games and shit it's the same thing in phone games they all either make you wait for a ridiculous period of time or you can pay a dollar to keep going. It just completely fucking boggles my mind. Like, maybe, maybe I'd be willing to pay if there was actual gameplay. But in games like that, it's just, you, you play for a couple minutes and then you have to wait half an hour or two hours or a whole fucking day for your shitty thing to build. Or they want me to pay for it to be done now. I'm not gonna do that! Because after you pay, you're gonna get another five minutes of playtime and then have to wait another fucking two days. And you know what? I'm not gonna wait! Because your game fucking sucks anyway! It's not fun. I say that Diablo 2 is just watching numbers go up and down, but the area in which you are watching those numbers looks nice and sounds nice and gives you a nice feeling. And there's this random chance of getting something fucking amazing and awesome that you haven't seen before. And there's progression. Fucking progression. You're going somewhere. In a phone game, it's a shitty quick cash grab that's ripping off another shitty quick cash grab. And the area in which I'm watching my numbers go up and down looks like uninspired pastel shit. And all I'm doing is watching the same countdown timer go down over and over and over again. Except it gets longer each time. And Diablo 3 is dangerously close to that. It says, why wait for something good to drop when you can buy it now with real money? And your number watching area isn't quite the same really nice one that you had before. And you have to put even less effort into your click, 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 clicking. It's just... I always play Diablo for myself. I'm not competing in ladders or testing builds. I'm just going in and having fun going through shitty evil dungeons and collecting neat swords. But mobile games and Diablo 3, it doesn't feel like I'm playing for myself. It just feels like I'm getting closer and closer to the point where my patience is run out, dying over and over, or having to wait days at a time before I can play the fucking game. And it's an inevitability that I'll either throw the game away or cave in and give the developers more money. And they're banking on you doing the second one because whenever you click, 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 you get to see a sick explosion. Well, I'm not interested. Fucking... Ugh. However, I'm going through the entire Diablo series. And, I'll admit, until you get to some sort of roadblock, it's still fun. Even if it's not as fun as previous games. <sighs> so, please, come watch me suck at Diablo 3. Hello everybody, I'm Wesley, I'm Diablo 3, I'm playing it. Fucking... So let me tell you a little story here about what's happened. Besides what I've told you in the intro about my experience with trying to install the game. Um, since then, there have been several instances of me trying to record me playing the game to show you, which have resulted in things like lost footage or unusable footage, uh, the game refusing to connect to the internet, and so 
every time I would attempt to get into the game, it would drop out, and every time I did that, it would create a new video th thing and fuck it up, and I thought I was done, and I had installed it, and I had to uninstall it again. It took me fucking two and a half hours to do it again. I'm not even going to bother fucking starting a new character. I've got one already. She's only level two. That's the one I was trying to use last time. I could have swore that I had found, like, armor or something for her, but I guess not. She looks like she's still in her underpants. So, fucking... She's a wizard! Uh... Let's go. Let's play the fucking thing. Like, I'm not sure exactly what e the benefit is of it being always online. Uh, I could tell you exactly what the detriments of it are. Uh, for example, things like... You know, if you have anything, like, below average for an internet connection, you're not going to be able to play it at all. Uh, so, if you're living somewhere that doesn't have good internet access, and I'm probably three years too late telling you this warning here, but if you live, like, I think the Midwest, those kind of places probably have subpar internet speeds. Uh, I hope you didn't buy, you know the collector's edition with the fucking expansion and any other bullshit that may cost money because uh, you probably just wasted a hundred and twenty dollars maybe a hundred I don't know I don't know how much exactly the expansion costs I'm fairly certain that it's pretty close to a fucking full price game for I'm what I'm pretty sure is less than a quarter of what is in the main game if you're looking at things like acts, I think there's one new act in comparison to the four or five of the original game, and one new class compared to the, again, four or five classes, maybe five or six in the original game. It's going the fucking well. There are probably objective words and terms for it, but all I can put it into right now is just feelings. Like Diablo 2, it's the feeling of slowly trekking through a cave, and there's danger around every corner, and, you know, you could die at any moment. Uh, and, and in this right now, as I said, it feels like I'm going down to the fucking grocery store. Empty equipment slot. Do I want to use this crossbow? I guess I can. I was super confused about that when I first started playing this game. Like, back around when it came out. Is that... Certain weapons... <coughs> didn't seem like they would do the things that I wanted with the kinds of attacks that I did. But what the weapon actually is like doesn't matter at all. Like you're actually just using the skill. This is the only thing that you're doing. And the stuff from the weapon just applies modifiers. And I was confused about that. Um... Because I was thinking of it like, okay, you have the weapon, clicking with it does an attack with the weapon. So if you have a sword, you're going to do a slash when you click. Uh, something like that. And then right click is, you know, your special skills that you get, that you pick and choose that do magic stuff. So if you left click and it makes your sword swing, and you right click it makes, you know, a fireball fly out or some shit like that. Um, and in this game, it's more like you left click and fireball A flies out and then you right click and then fireball B flies out. And the weapons are treated more like armor where it's just like passive pluses to this or that thing. And, uh, I don't know. I guess it works. Wait, what is that? Luke, Luke Goblin. Look at 
all that shit he just dropped? Oh, it's all crafting stuff. Eh, I'll take it. Come and dibbers. There's so many fucking cutscenes in this game. Also, is something else I just realized. Why is there so much talking to, to people? I'm bored with the game, so yeah, there's fucking Diablo 3 for you. I hope you're not bored with it as much as I am. Hopefully you you got something out of this. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the time period. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Uh -huh. Eh, eh, eh. <sighs>